Welcome to this week's edition of Liquid Options TV, a weekly show to help you with your options trading with a new episode posted each week right here on YouTube. My name is Eric, and by the end of this video, you're going to know how to look at the economic calendar inside the Thinkorswim platform so you aren't caught off guard by a jobs report, Fed announcements, or minutes, or some other kind of economic event that could definitely affect your trading. And if this is the first time you stop by the channel, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube so you won't miss a thing. All that and more coming right up. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right into the platform. And inside Thinkorswim, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Market Watch tab. And I've already selected the calendar here. And you can see that there's all kinds of things that you can look for. We're going to kind of focus on what I think are bigger sort of market movers. Now, I mainly trade index options, primarily SPX. So I'm really looking for the 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 big the Fed announcements, the job reports, um, inflation, Fed, all those type of stuff. But you can see here we have a lot of choices here. I'm going to uncheck pretty much everything because I'm not as concerned with that. I'm going to leave the one, and here they call it Econ Econo Day, and I think in the mobile app it might be called something different. But basically, we want to look at um, the economic events. And you can see if I highlight on, this is going to be for the following week, Monday, it'll break down each particular item and the time of day. Now, not all of these I would consider market moving events, but things like jobless claims, things that you know that, you know, if, if, if the the Fed is kind of looking at the job jobless claims right now, they're looking more in you know inflation when I'm doing this video, but in different market periods, they're going to be looking at jobs and things like that. So another one uh, tends to come in as CPI, um, which is consumer um, price index that can kind of give a clue as to inflation. So right now um, in late 2018, rate hikes are kind of the talk. Uh, but who knows down the line, it could also be rate hikes uh, or rate reductions, depending on what's going on. But this is a real quick way that if you're an index options trader, and this may be not as big of a deal for stocks, although it, it, they can be, if you're looking at trading um, you know, monthly option spreads and you know that you have a big economic event, uh, maybe some Fed minutes, we have some ECB minutes here, um, that might not be too huge for us. But if you know that the Fed minutes are coming out, let's say, then you know you may want to go ahead and take profits if you're in a profitable position and see what this market move does. And you could look to re-enter or maybe it's going to change something. They don't always change anything. What I find with some of these bigger economic events is that the market tends to sell off or rally you know, because of it. But then ultimately, it's going to maybe resume its, its whatever trend it's in, if it's in a trend. So a lot of these are knee-jerk reactions. And as options spread sellers, when you get the knee-jerk reaction and you get kind of a big move in one way, then we can look to maybe sell spreads against that and look for kind of a mean reversion. So that we'll kind of get into strategies later. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that you know, if you kind of want to see what's going on at a glance uh, for the next following week, you can look at the... Um, calendar inside Thinkorswim and also the mobile app. And there's other ways to look at this as well if you don't have Thinker, Thinkorswim, but I just wanted to show you how to do that in this platform. All right, so let's head back over to the charts and let's talk a little bit about this week's market action. So this week was pretty um, heavy in the, uh, you know, the event um, sort of category. And this is partly why I did this video. Now, when I go back, you know, I'm sorry, let me go back to this. If I go to, uh, this week, then the events are already gone. But previously, had you looked in here, you would see the FOMC minutes that were released yesterday. But anyway, so we had a couple things happen this week. We had midterm elections, uh, which was Tuesday night, and the results came out Wednesday. And the market had a really good push Wednesday. And, you know, the, the uh, Congress was able to strengthen its grip on the Senate, the House uh, got got kind of a majority with the Democrats. And here in Florida, they're recounting as usual. I swear I'm in Florida and it has nothing to do with me personally. But anyway, stop making fun of us. It's not my fault. Uh, anyway, so the market had a nice rally. But then um, on Thursday, which was the very next day, 
the Fed had their minutes. And basically, Powell is just saying, hey, you know, the economy's doing well. We're going to look to keep raising rates. Everything's on track. And that kind of put a stall on the rally. And then we kind of pulled back a little bit. So I'm kind of looking at this like, you know, just really expecting a range bound situation. Now, one thing I want to kind of point out here, and this is super speculative, is um, I'm kind of looking for an inverse head and shoulders here. I think we already know that the Fed was going to raise rates. They didn't really say anything different. Um, he wasn't more hawkish than he has been kind of thing. So if we do sell off, I'm going to look for the, I'm going to call it 2,700, even though this low, let me zoom in a little bit, the low from um, October that went, the initial sell off was right around 2710. Let's call it 2710. If 2710 holds and we start to get a, a strong up day, then I think we could actually end the year on a positive note. Um, I, you know, there it's already forecasted that they're going to hike rates in December. They didn't hike it; they left it unchanged. But we all kind of know it's coming. So when things are already kind of known and nothing changes, you got the certainty, the the uncertainty out of Washington kind of taken care of. Although with maybe not as bullish as people thought, because the GOP didn't sweep everything. But I don't think that's necessarily bullish either. But regardless, I'm looking at this pattern as a potential play if we sell off early into next week. Um, and depending on what the Bollinger Bands do, and this is where my technical analysis kind of helps me right now. Let me get out of this. So if we can sell off into 2710 and the Bollinger Bands are not expanding like this. So you, let's kind of compare this sell off with this other kind of sell off. So here the market was drifting lower. We had a big day and the lower band uh, shot lower and the upper band shot higher. This is a volatility breakout to the downside telling you that that the sell-off is for real without looking at anything else. Here, it happened again, but you notice that the top band was not as, um, because we recovered the next day, the top band didn't really shoot up. It shot up on the first day, shot down. We're like, okay, here's another big swoosh lower. And then the very next day we recovered a little bit. So this, you know, the, the ensuing selling that happened wasn't that bad. So that's telling me that the, the, velocity or the of the sell-off for, for right now is contained and we've actually started to reverse. So again, if we sell off into next week, I would be looking for 2,700 to 2,710 to hold as long as the sell-off isn't a large, big red candle. At that point, we're going to wait. We can maybe retest the lows and look for a double bottom, that kind of thing. Um, so it's still kind of a wait and see moment for me. What I've been telling members um, over on Patreon, which is, um, you know, the website that helps supports this show, what I've been telling members is really, I'm sticking to the smaller time frame. Um, let me show you a trade I did today. I took one earlier this week that did not work out, but let me show you the one that I took out today. Um, I sold some, pardon me, wrong indicator. I sold towards the end of the day. This is the 30 minute chart. It was around, uh, it was around this time when the market was really kind of kind of starting to break lower. I sold some 2790 bear call spreads that expired today. And although I took a little heat on this, ultimately it closed below and I was able to take max profit on a trade that lasted just a few hours. So 2790, 2795, um, I sold a couple of those. I was able to get 60 cents per spread or $60 per spread on a $500 of risk. And I was able to make max profit on those and really just playing the probabilities. And, and the, the setup, if you will, was that the market was kind of selling off. Everything was. So I sold the spread um, above that moving average. And although we came back up, it was still above that bowl, the upper Bollinger Band. So right now, the Bollinger Bands are telling us, this is a 30-minute chart, by the way, that we're kind of consolidating. And, you know, anything can happen over the weekend and into next week. Um, I do think China is still a, um, a factor, but it seems like that could be going well. So, again, I'm optimistic that uh, we're going to have an end of year rally. But again, you know, I'm not going to I don't try to predict it. I just um, or at least my predictions. I don't trade my predictions, if you will. I kind of trade what I'm seeing right now. I'm seeing a, a potential reversal from that big sell-off. So if we can maintain that level, I think we're okay. We'll be looking at maybe some monthly spreads now that the political uh, uncertainty is out of the way and the Fed's kind of just doing the same thing it's going to do. Then if we do sell off, I could maybe look at some 
lower spreads out in um, probably December. So we'll see what that looks like. And real quick, let me ask you something. I want to know what you guys think the market's going to do or what you think the market's going to do, given that all this news kind of came out between the Fed and the elections and all those things. Do you think we're going to get an end of the year rally? Uh, if you do, I want you to type yes in the comment section. If you think we're going to uh, get an end of year sell off, type no or feel free to to um, type in what you what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can get next week's episode. And if you click that little bell, you'll get notified right when the video uh, gets posted. So I try to post these each week. You guys have a great weekend and thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next week.